All right, what's up guys? VV back with another video. And in today's video, guys, we're going to be looking at the final game from the U.S. Nationals Tournament. This was a huge, like, 2,000-player tournament, and it could have been even bigger, but I'm not even about to get into what, what all happened at Nationals. I was not there. There are plenty of people out there who, who have been talking about it, so check them out. You know, um, Heart Pirates TCG, my buddy Joey's been talking about it. Uh, Small Hat uh, Chris, uh, Will to Win, and I'm sure many others have talked about it. If, from what I understand, it was a total disaster, but we're not going to focus on that in this video. Today, we're going to be looking at the final game of that tournament for, for first place. This is the first and second place guy here. You know, these two players are going to be first or second place, whoever wins, right? So, um, we're going to dive into that. This will be a, a game analysis video. We got Enel on the left versus uh, Sakazuki on the right. Blue, black, Sakazuki, of course. Okay, so I'm going to hit play, and uh, let me make sure this is in 2x speed so I can pause where I need to to kind of talk about it, because like I said, this will be a game analysis uh, style video. So right away, we've got uh, Sakazuki going first, which is not ideal, right? Sakazuki would prefer to go second usually, um, but it's still not the worst thing in the world. So he's going to go first, and let's see what he does. We, we can't quite see their hand entirely. It looks like he's going to... Okay, we can here. We, it looks like a 7 cost... Um, uh, it looks like he has a Houndblaze Sabo, a, I see the brand new in the Borsalino, and I, I can't tell what that is in between the Sabo and the Borsalino, the seven cost Borsalino. I think it might have been a three cost Hina. Tra of all those cards, he actually trashed the brand new. That That's the most interesting, <laughs> that is very interesting to me. I, I personally would have trashed the um, the seven cost because it's so early in the game. And then Anel's going to start off with a sure a search of his own. So that's ideal. Both players have had a, um, you know, it looks like he's going to have a decent follow-up, the Sakazuki will. But Anel's had a very solid start here and, and reveals a Gadatsu. So now Sakazuki knows I need to play around that. And, okay, and so it was, a, I'm pretty sure it was a three-cost Hina then, unless he drew it from the top this turn. Okay, and, he's, and he was at five cards, so he draws a card from it. That makes some sense why he trashed the brand new. But again, he trashes another brand new when he still has that seven cost in hand. Like the way that I play, and, and again, these hey, these guys are at the top tables. I'm not trying to uh, criticize the players' decisions. I'm ju we're just doing this video to understand why they did what they did. Okay, and, and clearly, if you're keeping the seven cost Borsalino, he has a, a target in mind for it if you're, if you're keeping it in your opening hand and not cycling with your leader's effect. Okay, so again... You know, we have to analyze these games. It helps us all get better. Okay, and now he has... An, Enel has an Ohm follow-up after doing the Shura revealing a Gadatsu. This is basically the perfect pull so far. Let, let's see what he gets from this. If he gets the dog from it... Oh, he didn't get the dog from the Ohm search. But let's see. But he does have it in hand. Awesome. Really solid. Okay. Can't ask for a much better start for Enel other than, like, maybe getting the dog from the Ohm search. <laughs> That's, like, all I can think of here. And so... The Sakazuki player playing around the Gadatsu very well here. Okay, th this is this is a good play, not playing around, or excuse me, playing around the NL. Okay, or excuse me, the Gadatsu. And doesn't attack again. So he did not attack last turn, and he is not attacking this turn. That's a little bit interesting to me. We do have to, like, pause and actually think about that for a second. Okay, when it comes to NL, you don't want to let them get down to one life. One life is where they start thriving, because even if you take them down to zero, they can get back to one and restart their leader's effect. Taking them down to two life, though, is pretty desirable, right? So that you can sit in a comfortable position a comfortable position later in the game where you don't have to attack early and, and waste your characters, let, you know, letting your opponent attack in your characters. So I'm surprised he's not at least attacking into life here, because it also weakens Yamato later in the game too, right? Like, you, you need to attack life at some point. So, so I, I understand playing around triggers as well. Don't think, you know, I'm, I'm not totally, um, you know, oblivious to that. You know, you do need to play on triggers, but that's very interesting. Okay, so Anel's decided, okay, well, I, my, my Gadatsu is just not going to get any value where I want it. So it's time to attack. Swings for six. And um, Sakazuki's considering it. Maybe it's a Houndblaze. It was a Houndblaze. I, I would consider using the Houndblaze on the Holy, personally. They're like, you know, it, it would just bounce it to hand. But, you know, just to slow my opponent down a little bit, I don't think that's the worst call in the world. But but he chooses to take it. That's also not the worst idea. But here we go. Holy's coming in sideways. Swing for six. Ohm coming in sideways. Swing for six. And play another Holy. Okay. 
Now, Sakazuki can easily... I'm just going to pause this right here. Sakazuki can easily eat this board up, right? Anyone who knows um, how to play Sakazuki or who has seen people play Sakazuki at a high level, these cards, the highest cost card is a four, and then there's two threes and then a two. He can easily eat up probably all but one of these cards, if not all the cards this turn. Okay, so let's see what happens here. So Sakazuki, swing five at, at Ohm, and then minus one to the um, one of the holies. Swing five more at Ohm. How many cards does NL want to use trying to save this card? Okay, not many. Uses one, and I, I understand that. It makes sense to, to force the one extra attack, because otherwise, like how do I say this? If he had let it die from the first attack, from the Sakazuki, then, he, you know, um, theoretically the uh, Sakazuki player would not have to attack with his Hina just yet. Because he, I'm sure he has a Luchi in hand. Let's see if we can actually see it. Yeah, it looks like he has a Luchi right here, if I can see that properly. So it, it makes sense, you know, at least at least forcing to attack with two, because having to attack with two also forced a Dawn uh, usage from his opponent. So that made, that made a lot of sense. And it's doubtful, he'll, it's doubtful he'll attack with the Sabo, but he might. In fact... He has five Dawn left after after using that Great Eruption to drop one of the dogs down to one. I would not be surprised if he loads up this Dawn here, because that does make sense. Trashes a Hound Blaze, like with, with Leader Effect, I'm saying. Yeah, I think you swing seven at the dog here with Sabo. Absolutely, and he does. So there goes your Sabo. Now, Rob Lucci, trash, get, get rid of the whole board. So like I said, he got rid of the, the entire board there, and now he has a decent board. Okay, and just so you guys know, I didn't really watch this game. I only pre-recorded it, right? Like, I just recorded it, so I, I didn't really sit down and watch this game fully. Okay, and there, there you go. So he, he wipes the board right back. That's interesting to me as well. Like, I, I would have probably tried to save my Sabo personally because it was only 8 coming in, so it'd be a 2K and a 1K. I would definitely let the Hina go. Letting Hina go is an absolute no-brainer. But after seeing the Anel come down and you know there is no follow-up play... Uh, it, it would be a consideration in my mind. That's all I'm saying. It, it would definitely be a consideration. But these guys, like I said, the, you know, these guys are in, in first and second place right now. Whoever wins this gets first place. There's a reason they're up here, right? There's there's a reason they're at, they're at these tables. Okay, so let's see what he has in mind. And I can't quite see everything in his hand. Maybe he didn't have the counter power to save the Sabo, right? Because again, I, I I can't really see his hand perfectly, and I'm not trying to pause the video every second to to analyze whenever he does a hero cycle. So swing five at leader, minus one to um, NL. NL player takes it. He wants to get down in life here. He definitely wants to start going down in life so that he can start getting some value. Hina, minus three, or excuse me, minus four, obviously, to, to NL. And now Houndblaze. Okay, and he decides he's just going to let it go here, it looks like. Yeah, he's picking up the dice and th throws it on the bottom. Swing nine at leader. Okay. And he takes it, and L does take it, no trigger. So so two two non-triggers so far for the Sakazuki player. You know, that's that's good. Well, you, you guys know what I mean. Like, two non-triggers for an L, which is beneficial to the Sakazuki player. And establishes out the Kuzan, and it looks like he's going to use his leader's effect at the end of the turn here. It looks like he's going to trash the Hina. No? Okay, trash trashes the, um, the Great Eruption. That's interesting. Swing six at... Um, okay, swinging six... So, the, so now... The turn has been passed over to um, the Anel. Why is everyone's Dawn untapped? I'm so confused right now. Did I miss something? I, I don't want to go backwards, but that, that's interesting. The, the Anel player is swinging six at Lucci, it looks like. And he's going to let it go. I, I might have tried to save that. I, I, I may have tried to save that. That's just me. Uh, but okay, he, he does let it go. And then and then Yamato comes down. This is why it's good to put your to not take the, the uh, Anel player down to one life. Because they can just gain the life right back with Yamato. However, if he could have got him down to one life there, he could have saved one of his four-cost characters, right? So it's one of those things with Yamato where, where, you're, where you're at this point where, okay, sometimes you just have to bite the bullet. You can't get the full value. You need to take whatever good enough value you, you can get at the moment. And getting the four-cost Kuzan off the board is, is massive. Okay, so let's see what the Sakazuki player can do here. He, he's, he's eyeing that seven-cost Borsalino. Um... Let's see what he wants to do here. Does he have... Doesn't he have a Hina in hand? Because I thought he had a Hina in hand from last turn. Wow. Now he trashes the 7 cost Borsalino. I'm, I'm so confused. That's very interesting. Wait. Oh, I, I almost could see the hand there. Because I feel like the play here should have been... If... Again, this is if I can see everything properly in his hand. I think I would have played out the Hina for 3. 
dropping down the the what's her name the Yamato down to to five, swing with leader, drop him to four, and then play out my my Borsalino to get rid of it. That's just me. That's just the way that I would have done that. But let's see what he has. Okay, he's going to establish a Kuzan. That seems good. You know, hoping that there's no removal uh, from the from the uh, NL player. That does seem very good. And then plays down the Borsalino. Okay, cool. So let's see what happens here. Um, looking at the NL player's hand, it looks like he's got... Um, it looks like a Sanji, a Brule. Okay, 200 million volts of Maru. Taps down the... Um, Taps down the Kuzan, swing nine into it. So the Sakazuki player makes the correct play here. You don't defend this because it's going to be nine more coming in the next turn, right? Like or the next attack rather with with the Anel because Anel's sitting at eight k power, eight thousand power right now. So if you did block with your Borsalino, you're just going to lose it the, the next swing anyway. And he swings for nine at, at face here. I would probably take this. You know, it's one of those situations. It looks like he only has a Hina and like some uh, Rebecca's in hand. Okay, did not see what he drew. Play out Sanji, play out Brule. Okay, so so I did see those correctly in hand, and I can't quite see the rest of the cards in the um, NL player's hand. Now he's got him face down. Okay, so Sakazuki is staring at a pretty menacing board at this point. Not something that he it you know that that uh, Sakazuki cannot deal with, but he's got some he's got some uh, <laughs> he's got to make up a lot of uh, distance here, a lot of room. He's he's got he's got a long way to go. So let's see what he does here. I, I see, all that I could see was two Rebecca's and a Manchuri, and that's not what we need right now, right? Like we need like a, something that's more of an answer. Um, he's got a Lucci sideways in his trash. He's gonna pay four for Rebecca. He's gonna grab a two K counter, and now he's going to play out the Hina to minus four the Sanji. Very good. And then it looks like he's going to eat up both blockers here. That that's something good for the Sakazuki here. And then he's gonna return the cards to the bottom from the. Uh, from uh, what's his name? From Lucci's effect and past turn with two dawn active. Wouldn't that be cool if he actually was playing like a shockwave or an impact wave? But I don't believe any deck is running that currently. There's just not enough room in the deck. Okay, so smash, smash, and uh, he gets rid of two characters. One, one being Rebecca. Uh, the other, I believe, was Hina. Uh, the other Hina he had down, and now he is staring at two in, uh, Yamatos with five cards in hand to, to defend these. This is why I wish he could have done that play I was saying, where he, where he could have just Borsalinoed one of the Yamatos off the board. I, f I feel like that would have been a little more beneficial in, in this exact situation. Uh, but again, I don't know what's going through these players' minds. I don't know what how, how much play testing they've done. Because obviously, this is Nationals, guys. This is Nats. Uh, this was a 2,000-plus player tournament, even though not everyone was able to get into it because of, you know, whatever happened, uh, you know, with the tournament organizing. But... These are very, very good players, right? They made it here for a reason. However, you know, people do make mistakes. And when these games go on for longer and longer, you know, it, it becomes easier and easier to make mistakes. Let me pause it. So he just swung for 11, it looks like, at uh, Yamato. And he gets a 2K, 1K out of it, I believe. Or a 2K, 2K, something like that. Grabs out a Rebecca. And, and let's see what he gets. He's probably going to grab a 2K counter. He gets a Sabo. Very nice. So preparing for next turn. So like I was saying, though, these guys do make mistakes. It does happen. And I'm not saying he made a mistake. But the other thing is this. They've put so much playtesting into it. They have determined, like, okay, after all my playtesting and all my experience in this matchup, this is what I think is the right call in this situation. Okay, so let's keep going. So it passes back to Anel. This is scary because it is a Yamato. It is two Yamatos and a leader swing. And the you know, the, the Sakazuki player only has two blockers and one life. Okay, so it's like, this is not good. Swing six at the leader. The 2K counter out of this. Um, whoop, did I miss something? So he swung for six at who? Hang on a second. Did they... Um, it looked like he only countered out with one. I, I must have missed something there. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, wait, they're talking right now. So maybe, maybe that's what just happened. Okay, so... Oh, wow. Okay, so because he countered out for an incorrect amount but said it was probably the right amount, he has to now make up for that amount. And he had to he had to trash a 2K counter. So like I said, guys, these guys are they're fatigued, they're tired, mistakes happen no matter what, no matter how good you are, mistakes can happen. And that was a massive mistake, losing uh, a but the 2K had to go, but he just lost the Sabo from, from his hand that he got last turn that he was going to play this following turn. Oh, gosh.
that's heartbreaking. Then he played out the uh, the third Yamato. The NL player plays out the third Yamato. There's three uh, uh, life cards between them. So KO's a three or less. There goes one of the attackers. This is not looking good for Sakazuki. And I don't even think it would have mattered if he had the Sabo. I mean, of course, the Sabo would have helped. But, like, I don't think that's going to be what makes or breaks this game right here. I think not getting these Yamatos off the board is what's going to make or break this game right now. Like, they have to go. Uh, and how is he going to do that at this point in the game? NL does have three cards in hand, so there's a lot of potential counter power. Oh, here we go. So swinging for one, two, three, four, five, six. So coming in for 11 at Yamato. Has the 3K to get out of it again. That is, That might have been game over right there. Like, that might have been the crucial play that actually won the game. You know what I mean? Because that, that's the kind of situation where it's like one of these Yamatos had to go. And you still might not win, but one of them had to leave the play had to leave play this turn, or you, you just have no chance of winning, right? So okay, here we go. Uh, gets a 2k counter back, and it looks like it's gonna be a turn pass turn. Three Yamatos and a Nell against two blockers and one life. This is not looking good. So swing ten, swing ten. This is to get out of like a double 2k block from the from the um and there we go. So it was he already had it all all the math done. It was swing 10, swing 10, swing 11, and then swing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, swing 11. So 10, 10, 11, 11. There's no way out of it. It looks Well, actually, he does have a lot of counter power in hand, but what will it matter? It like, let me see. It looks like he has two Tashigis, a Suru. That's 11 right there, so he can get out of this, <laughs> but, but at what cost, right? It, it comes down to like, okay, this is going to be... Um, you have one attack. I have basically three life because it's a Nell, right? And Nell has like three life in this situation. Yeah, okay, you got one of my Yamatos. Yeah, he just passed turn, basically, you know, and your turn. And GG. That was awesome, guys. So, really good game. Um, and I really love the format they have. This, like, this top-down view. Uh, this is all that I need, right, as far as, like, uh, the quality of the, of, the, of the game goes. And I will talk about that for a second as well. I got to do a little bit of constructive criticism. That's a word that's been going around lately if you watch all the same uh, YouTubers as I do. Number one, they need to do better in the future at organizing their events. I'm not going to talk a lot about it because I was not there. But from what I've heard, it sounds like it was a nightmare. Okay, and I, again, I don't want to go into too much detail. They need to fix that in the future. Number two, this is great. I'm a, I'm a big fan of this top-down view. Like, this is all we needed. For, for a lot of the game, we could actually see both players' hands from our bird's-eye view. And then we, we have the whole board laid out. It'd be, it'd be nice if they cropped it a little better or something where we're not like looking at their legs the whole time. But still, this is, this is a good step in the right direction here. This is solid. Um, and then one last thing I want to talk about is like this. So not everyone can go to every tournament, okay? Especially in the United States. The United States is huge. If I wanted to go to this tournament, which I couldn't, I have a full-time job, I've got two kids. It was just not in the cards for me. If I wanted to go to this tournament, it's like a four-hour flight, Right, I, or I don't know the exact number. I mean, I, I'm not going to look it up, but if I'm not mistaken, it's somewhere between like a three and a four hour flight, and and you're in another, you're you're three time zones behind or four time zones behind, whatever it is, over in the Pacific versus the Eastern, because I'm over in the Far East, and that's the Far West, right? It's it's just, you know, not everyone's going to be able to go to these tournaments. So what do we need as spectators, as fans of the game, as people who want to watch this, a stream? Well, guys, for those who don't know. This was not streamed. They only streamed the finals of the of the three. I think it was uh, Battle Spirit Saga, Digimon, Dragon Ball, and One Piece. I believe that was the four tournaments they held at this big major uh, Bandai event at, in Los Angeles, over in California, in the U.S. And I believe they only filmed or only well only you know uh, streamed on YouTube. By the way, not even on Twitch. They only streamed on YouTube the final games of each one, like the finals matches, and. That, for me, really frustrated me. Someone, like, I'm a content creator, right? I, I, like, I want, I can't always make it to these tournaments, too, just because of how busy I am in my personal life. I wanted to at least watch the tournament. Like, yeah, sure, I, I'm glad they recorded this so I could do a video analysis of it. But, man, that, that really got under my skin. But, okay, that's enough ranting and raving for me, just as, as a, that's the spectator view of it, right? Y'all have heard from a lot of the players that, that got to go and got, you know, really some of them i think really got screwed over they they were saying and, and again i wasn't there so i don't know i'm just going off what they said but guys from the spectator view how is this not streamed there's over there's almost two thousand players that ended up being able to participate i think it was like 1950 or something like that 
like out of that, like how do you not have the ability to stream at least the top table of each one of those? Oh well, it is what it is. Like I said, I don't want to complain too much. This game itself, though, between these two players, the Anel player and the Sakazuki, incredible game. Really enjoyed watching that. Very high level play. And um, I can't wait to see how Worlds goes. So you guys tell me what y'all think in the comment section below. Did I miss anything? Did, I, did something happen that I, that I looked over in, in the video or something you want to add? Something, uh, some info that I didn't know about? By all means, hit us, hit us you know, hit, hit up the comment section below. There we go, guys. Uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time, guys, peace.